Is buying a 2011 iMac with a broken graphics card worth it? So this iMac came out in 2011 and was the last commercial 21.5 inch iMac with a DVD drive before they started going to the slim design what Apple still use today in their 5K iMac and the iMac Pro. So this iMac here, up until summer last year, to me, was the best budget iMac you could probably buy. The main reason was you could upgrade it beyond the RAM, as it were. You could upgrade the processor. You could also take out the DVD drive and put in another hard drive instead, like an SSD. You could also even upgrade the graphics. So that leads nicely to the red herring with this iMac here. I found it on eBay and the seller said it had problems with its display, showing unusual colours in the corner and getting very hot. However, it was only £95 with postage, what is about $120. US But before I bought it, I did a bit of research and I found out the way to fix this iMac is to bake the graphics card. Yup, you heard me correctly, you can bake the graphics card from a 2011 iMac. All you need to do is stick it inside your oven for about 8 minutes on 200 degrees um, centigrade Fahrenheit and then afterwards then you can stick it back in your iMac and then power it on. So as you can imagine when this iMac arrived that is the first thing what I did to it. The first time turning it on, everything worked perfectly. So a massive thanks to the community who discovered that this method worked. So let's now look at the specs being it's now all working. So it's a 21.5 inch mid 2011 iMac equipped with a 2.5 gigahertz dual core hyper threaded i5 processor. It also has four gigabytes of RAM. However, like most other i5 or i7 Intel iMacs, you can actually push this to 30 gigabytes of RAM, but to be fair, this is a little overkill on this iMac here. Also included is a 500 gigabyte spinny hard drive as well. Then finally, the graphics that we just repaired and baked to get working is an ATI Radio and HD 6750M with 512 megabytes graphics. So of course, when I opened up this iMac to fix the graphics, I did put in a few 2019 essential upgrades inside. I have removed the DVD drive, as we are in 2019, and put in a 120 gigabyte SSD. Also, I had a spare one terabyte hard drive lying around, so I swapped it for the 500 gigabyte inside. With those upgrades inside, I decided to run a Geekbench 4 benchmark test and it got 8,291. What is a bit higher than a late 2016 MacBook Pro with 8,122. So to me straight away, this tells me this Mac has the full potential to run some Pro apps like Photoshop and Final Cut Pro. Now obviously you're not going to get the best rendering in Photoshop or in Final Cut Pro, However, if you were to edit 720p or 1080p videos, then this iMac has the full potential to do that for you. The screen is even a 1080p screen, so you can watch your videos at full resolution. Now, I wanted to make sure that this iMac's graphics card wasn't going to fail me right away. So I ran a medium Eugene Heaven benchmark test as well. The great thing about this benchmark test is that you can leave it on for hours to see if the graphics is going to overheat or in my case stop working altogether or getting any problems at all really. Well luckily after 60 minutes of leaving the benchmark app running the graphics card was heating to 60 degrees Fahrenheit and that didn't, did not fail in any way. So it's safe to say that this graphics card shouldn't fail anytime soon. I even did a test play of playing a bit of GTA 5 and was guessing around 42 frames per second, but this was on a low setting, however it was very playable. This also does bring me to one of the big downsides to this iMac in its current form. That is, this iMac is not supported to have the latest Mac OS Mojave 
and even the patched version doesn't support the graphics cards that are inside this iMac. So basically almost every iMac that came out in 2010 to 2011 cannot run Mojave and you'll have to be stuck on High Sierra. However, you can upgrade the graphics card to say an NVIDIA GTX 680M or it's taken out of another laptop, for example like an Alienware laptop, and it will work on this iMac. However, that will cost you around £280, what is about $350 to buy, and to be honest, isn't really worth it. Anyway, back to the pros about this machine. It features a fantastic 1080p screen and that means it is a non-retina display. And you'll think that everything will be all pixelated then. I'm happy to report to you that unlike pre-retina MacBook Pro screens, which have not aged very well, this one looks pretty good even today. It has a nice IPS display with rich colours and really impressive viewing angles for something that is 8 years old. It is superb. The only complaint that I have and you may have noticed this from my camera picking up, its display is very reflective and it does not have that anti-reflective coating that you'll find in a lot of the newer Macs. So, moving on to the rear, there are a good number of ports, including a Thunderbolt 1 port, SD card slot on the side, but you can't see here, but it is on the side, headphone out and mic in, it also features a Firewire 800 port, and it was the last generation of iMac to actually have this port. It also has four times USB ports. Sadly though, these ports are USB 2.0 and it was the last iMacs to actually have the USB 2.0 before the new slim design that came out a year later had the USB 3.0 port on them. So overall, I would rate this is more than a capable iMac in 2019. But be cautious that there are no more OS updates to it. There's nothing coming to upgrade the operating system anytime soon and you can't really patch it with the current graphics card inside to run Mojave smoothly. So if you do find an iMac available like on eBay for a really really good price with a broken graphics card you know now that you can bake it and then put it back inside the iMac and voila it will be fully working again. Well guys, thank you very much for watching this video and as always if you have liked it please press the like button below, also please do leave any comments below at the same time and also please do subscribe to my channel to see more videos where I'll be looking into more Apple equipment, uh, what is a bit more on the older design and it can still be used today. But until next time, see you in the next video.